Investors Compensation Scheme Limited v West Bromwich Building Society 1997 UKHL 28 is a frequently cited English contract law case which laid down that a contextual approach must be taken to the interpretation of contracts. Lord Hoffman set out five principles, so that contract should be construed according to what a reasonable person having all the background knowledge would have understood. Where the background includes anything in the matrix of fact that could affect the language's meaning. But excluding prior negotiations, for the policy of reducing litigation. Where meaning of words is not to be deduced literally, but contextually. On the presumption that people do not easily make linguistic mistakes. Topic: <inaudible> Facts. Investors received negligent advice from their financial advisors, solicitors, and building societies, including West Bromwich Building Society (West Bromwich BS). They had claims in tort and for breach of statutory duty. The investors had been encouraged by financiers to enter home income plans, which meant mortgaging their properties to get cash that they would put into equity linked bonds. They lost money when house prices and stocks fell. Under the Financial Services Act 1986 Section 54 the Securities and Investments Board started the Investors' Compensation Scheme Limited, where investors could be directly compensated for their losses, and ICS would try recoup the cost by suing the building societies on everyone's behalf. Accordingly, to get the compensation investors signed a contract to assign their claims to ICS. But in Section 3 B of the claim form the assignment excluded any claim whether sounding in rescission for undue influence or otherwise that you have or may have against the West Bromwich Building Society, so that investors could still sue on some claims individually. While ICS Limited was suing, West Bromwich BS argued that or otherwise meant that claims for damages, as well as rescission, had not been assigned. ICS Limited argued that the clause actually meant that claims for damages had been assigned, because or otherwise referred to rescission-based claims other than undue influence, but not damages. Evan Lombs J held that the right to claim rescission had been retained but the right to claim damages had been assigned. Leggett LJ overturned the High Court, and ICS Limited appealed. Topic: Judgment. The House of Lords held by a majority that the right to claim rescission was retained by the investors, but the right to claim for damages had indeed been assigned. Construed in its context, the words "any claim, whether sounding in rescission for undue influence or otherwise that you have or may have against the West Bromwich Building Society" in effect had meant any claim sounding in rescission, whether for undue influence or otherwise. It followed that ICS Limited could sue West Bromwich BS and other building societies to vindicate the investors' claims. Lord Lloyd dissented. Lord Hoffman stated the following. Lord Goff, Lord Hope and Lord Clyde concurred. See also Reardon Smith Lines Limited v Hansen Tangen 1976-1 WLR 989 Principles of European Contract Law Article 5 to 102 A preliminary negotiations are relevant to interpretation and so is G good faith and fair dealing Hollier v Rambler Motors AMC Limited 1972 1 All Air 399 
Gillespie Brothers v. Roy Bowles Limited, 1973, 1QB 400, 415. Lord Denning, judges have, time after time, sanctioned a departure from the ordinary meaning. They have done it under the guise of construing the clause. They assume that the party cannot have intended anything so unreasonable. So they construe the clause strictly. They cut down the ordinary meaning of the words and reduce them to reasonable proportions. They use all their skill and art to that end. Rainy Sky SAV Cookman Bank 2011 UKSC 50 Chartbrick Limited v Persimmon Homes Limited 2009 UKHL 38 equals equals notes